In this video, I thought we'd have a look at an audio post-production workflow from start to finish. So we've got three things to begin with. A quick time of the video itself, and then we've got a Pro Tools session which has a voiceover recording in it. We'll come to that shortly. And we've also got a folder which contains several audio files and an AAF. So whenever a video editor exports something for audio post-production from Media Composer, Premiere, Final Cut Pro, they're going to want to export it either as an AAF or as an OMF file. And what this allows you to do is essentially open and reconstruct the audio timeline from the video editing software in Pro Tools. Now you can see that this AAF, in terms of file size, is actually very small. And that's because it's what you call a non-embedded AAF file. And what that means is all of the accompanying audio comes with it, but isn't actually built into the file itself. So you have a small AAF with a whole batch of audio files. If you have one which is embedded, then you have a very large AAF. You know, it could be a gig, maybe even larger, and all the audio will be built into it. But in this case, we've just got a batch of files that go with it. So the first thing to do is to open this with Pro Tools. Now, you can double click it and Pro Tools will open it as though it was a session. You could also just use File Open Session. So I'm just gonna double click it. And the first thing that we see is the new session dialog. So the settings which it comes up with here by default should be the ones which it's picked up from the actual file and the accompanying audio. So in this case, 48 kilohertz, which is the sample rate that you're gonna work in in the majority of cases for most post-production jobs. And the bit depth, well, this is 16 bit, but because I might want to record some new stuff into the session, I think I'm gonna change that to 24 bit just so we get the benefit of the uh, improved dynamic range. So I'll click OK. Then it prompts you where you want to put the session and when you click save it's going to bring up the import session data window so we won't worry too much about the specifics of this in this video but essentially this will tell you information about um, time code frame rate sample rate bit depth and so on and it will also give you a list of the tracks which are incorporated into this AAF or OMF file. So these are the ones which have come over from the editing software. So you just need to make sure that all of the destinations are set to new track. And I'll click OK. And then what we'll see is Pro Tools will start to reconstruct the timeline as it was in the editing software. And the tracks have retained the name that they were exported with and all the audio is spotted to the correct location. So obviously the larger the session, the larger the project, the longer this is going to take. This is a really short one, so it shouldn't take too long. Whilst that's happening, I can bring the video in. So I'm just going to drag and drop this QuickTime into the track list. And then in the video import options, I'll just choose new track and I'll put it at the session start. If you wanted to, you could also bring in the audio from the file. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to bother because we've got the audio separately. So I'll just click OK. Okay, and there you can see that the video track is at the top, and we'll just give it a few more seconds. You'll know when both of these red indicators go green, you'll know that everything is not only imported, but is also online and available. So there you go. So at this point, I usually just save it. And first thing to do is to just check that we've got synchronization, because there's no point in progressing unless um, the audio is actually in sync. So I'm just gonna solo one of these tracks these look, look like dialogue tracks and you know the name suggests that. So I'll solo this, zoom in a little bit. Savro's um, heritage. Let's have a listen to this. Uh, it's tradition, it's bespoke, it's designer. Okay, that looks like it's in sync. I'll check another bit. You've got international designer collections down there. So you've got the likes of Lan Van, you've got Boateng, you've got Har And usually I also check something towards the end of the project just to make sure that it hasn't drifted by the time we get you know further into it. So check this bit and just the handwriting that Richard James brings for the prices we're asking. Oh. Okay, so that looks okay. I mean, you know, you could spend time watching it through. Uh, for the sake of speed on this video, uh, we'll just, let's just assume it's going to be okay. Um, this video is actually quite long, and so it's going to get a bit tedious if we try and work through the whole thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trash everything from from about this point onwards, I think. So we'll mix the first what, four and a half minutes or so, I think. So let's just select all that. And then maybe extend that selection down a little bit. In incidentally, if you want to extend the selection down, if you hold down the shift key 
and uh, press the colon key on the keyboard, it will extend it down. If you wanted to extend it up, it would be shift and the letter P. So I'll just select all that and then delete it all. You can actually, in Pro Tools HD, also divide and delete part of the video track. You can't do that in the non-HD software, at least not yet, but I'm sure Avid will no doubt add it in at some point soon. So first things first, let's just have a quick look at exactly what we've got here. We know we've got dialogue there. Uh, I think this is a guide voiceover. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke tailoring. Okay, so in this particular project, that's actually going to be replaced. This was purely an editing guide for the editor at the time of putting the video together, but it was subsequently re-recorded, and so that's why we've also been given this uh, voiceover export, and we need to bring this into the current project. So I could drag and drop that session file onto this one, and it'd bring up the import session data dialog, or I could just go to the file menu, import session data, and then I have to find the file. Okay, so it's on this hard drive, and I think it's in here. And then there it is. Click open, and it'll give me a list of tracks, and it's really simple because there is only one track. Let's just put that on a new track. It's worth just quickly checking the time code. The time code in this case is correct. Our session, I probably didn't make it apparent earlier, but our session starts at one hour. Uh, and the time code in this one does, so at least we know that it should be where it's supposed to be. And we're quite lucky in this case because somebody has taken the time to actually edit this voiceover and spot it to the right location. A lot of the time you'll be doing this quite manually, but this has been done partly for us. So click OK. Uh, and then what you'll see is the audio will start to appear. Let's just move it underneath this one. And it looks like it's broadly in the right place. So. This should roughly correlate with the rough guide voiceover, so we'll just play them at the same time, and this should be roughly in line. With a real eye for the individual. Ah, I forgot to send this to the output, so let's do that. With a real, with a real eye, eye for, for the, the individual, individual. And, famous and famous for its bespoke, for its bespoke service. service. Okay, that's fine. Um, I could now just delete the guide voiceover, but I usually just hide it and make it inactive, because you never know when you might want to go back to it. And because we're only doing the first four and a half minutes, I'll just get rid of that. Okay. Now, the next thing to do, this music is on dual mono tracks. Let me just move all these up so that they're all, all together. And that's not very practical, so we might as well create a couple of new stereo audio tracks. And then let's... I use the object grabber a lot of the time for this. Select that. Um, if I hold down the control key, I can actually constrain the, the horizontal movement. So hold down control, and if I drag it... and what it means is that I can't accidentally drag it left or right, so it means it's uh, essentially locked in terms of its timeline position. Now I'm going to select these previous tracks, right-click, delete those. Uh, these music tracks, I can rename them. Music 1, press Command and right arrow key to name the next one. Music 2. Next, I notice that the panning position is set to the middle on this track, and so I like to just view the panning and typically you'll get breakpoints on there which you don't need so we'll delete the pan breakpoints for for the left and delete the pan breakpoints for the right that just gives us free control now to pan it as we need it's possible that we might also have volume automation but in this case we don't if there was volume automation by all means have a listen through it just to get an idea of what the editor's intent was but at some point you're probably just going to want to wipe that out because you, you'll want to do the mix properly as we say. Next thing I can see that these sound effects are also on a pair of mono tracks so the same thing again I'm just gonna create two new stereo tracks name these sound effects 1 and sound effects 2 okay although I'll have to give that a different name just because the tracks already called that and now I'm gonna bring the audio down off the original ones. Again I'm holding down control and this one. And the reason why these are on two tracks rather than one is because there's a little bit of overlap on, on that particular sound effect. And then we'll delete the other tracks, delete those, delete those. So all this work that we're doing at the moment is basically a major time saver. If you just start trying to mix something uh, when you've got stuff all over the place then it's actually going to slow you down. So the time spent now will save more time than this 
further down the line. Uh, I've created a master fader because we want to, of course, monitor the overall level of this. Next, these two tracks of dialogue are actually two separate microphones, but they're the same recording. So in, in the case where we've got interviews with people, let's see if we can find one where it's actually visible. Okay, we've got two mics. So this one. Tailored product especially is, 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 is complicated. You know, you start with a concept and you work it. And, and then we've got this. Tailored product especially is, 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 is complicated. So the bottom one sounds a little bit thinner and I can't exactly remember which one was which. I suspect that the thinner sounding one is probably the tie clip mic and the other one is uh, the shotgun mic. Let's just check another little bit further back. The same sort of thing. Let's play this bit. So bottom one. You've done this. You've got the likes of Lamb Van, you've got Boateng, you've got Hardy Amos. And then top one. You've done this. You've got the likes of Lamb Van, you've got Boateng, you've got Hardy Amos. So they're, they're, they're a really traditional and well-established brands. But all okay. This is really open to your own decision as to which one you use. I'm going to go with the top one, but again, it's a bad idea to d delete tracks at this point. So even though I'm almost certainly going to be using mostly the top one, I'm just going to hide the one below it in case I need to revert back to it. Let's just double check that we have no stray volume automation there that's going to throw anything. We don't. Okay. And we're almost ready to start mixing. And typically in my workflow, I start with the dialogue and I get that consistent before I do anything else. Let's put on this track a high pass filter. So let's just use the standard stock one band EQ, switch it to high pass. There's not much in dialogue below, you know, 100 hertz or so, but I don't know, let's go with 90 hertz. So that's just cutting out any low frequency rumbles that we don't need. And the next thing to do is if we're working on something to the current broadcast specification, then we're going to need uh, metering which supports that. Pro Tools comes with a variety of different metering options, which are all fine, but generally in post-production, this old PPM BBC standard is no longer used. So it was up until very recently, but we switched to uh, a loudness metering standard now. And in the UK, that's called EBU R128. Um, in America, it's ATSC A85, which is similar, but the spec is just a little bit different. So there's various different plugins which you can get to meter that type of um, loudness. And the one which I like to use is Waves WLM Plus. So it's Waves Loudness Meter. And I'm just gonna switch to the preset. So with this preset, what we'll be doing as we mix, in fact, let me just talk a little bit about what the specification requires. So if I just run this dialogue through it, Savaro's, um, the level is of course random at the uh, moment it's tradition. it's unmixed. It's bespoke. Um, it's you've got designer. the short term loudness here and, basically it's and this is now. measured in LUFS, loudness units, full scale. And the spec basically says that the most important specification here is the long term loudness. So the long term is the average loudness measured ac across the entire program duration. The short term is averaged over and I might be wrong here, but I think it's about the last three seconds or so. So usually dialogue is quite a good indicator of program loudness. So my workflow generally is as I'm balancing the dialogue out, I'll be aiming for the target level. And in the co case of EBUR128 in the UK, the target level is minus 23 LUFS. I'm going to start by playing this dialogue and I'm going to clip gain these uh, pieces of dialogue. There's a shortcut which I use there actually, which is control shift and then the minus key at the top of the keyboard allows you to toggle the clip gain line on or off. So if you are clip gaining something, you know, the clip gain line means that you can use dynamic clip gain within the clip like that if you want to do that. Or of course, even without that, you could use the little clip gain mini fader and it'll just bring the whole clip up or down. So let's just run this one. So I'm going to do the first part of this and then we'll probably just cut a section out so that we can skip ahead to the point where I've done all of the dialogue levels. So firstly, let's go with this. Savaro's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition. So that's a little bit it's low. Bespoke. I'll push that one up. I might also go back in and just sort that peak out. Savaro's, um... And the other thing that I'm going to do, a couple of things is, firstly, let's switch to time code. I like to work in grid and I'll make sure that the grid is set to one frame increments. There's a bit of a, a rough edit on this. Savaro's, uh... You know, when it comes in, so I'll just put a short fade on that. Savaro's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition. 
it's bespoke. And even though I said I was going to use this microphone track, you can see that there's a noise there. Uh, so on second thoughts, I'm going to go back on what I said actually, and I'm going to try using the other microphone track. That actually now, given that that noise is there, suggests to me that that is probably the tie clip mic um, as opposed to the shotgun mic. So because I think he, he knocked the mic a couple of times. So let's change tact a bit and go with this one. Savaro's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition, it's bespoke, it's designer. Okay. And this seems to have brought in some fade files as well. Savaro's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition, it's bespoke, it's designer. So it looks like the fades and basically is world have actually been done for us at the start and end of all these clips. Um, let me bring this one up. So, you know, this is quite a tedious process. And basically Essentially, I'm going through and I'm making sure that each of piece of dialogue of is somewhere in the ballpark of minus 23. If you're working um, in the US on programs for broadcast, the ATSC A85 standard uses the same basic measurement mechanism in the background. It's something called ITU BS 1770-3, um, but the target level's different. So the US target level is actually minus 24, and it's denoted as LKFS. Um, it's just a minor difference, but here in the UK it's minus 23, so... It's the mecca for tailoring in the world. It's the mecca... You know, you could spend ages messing about with this, but we are going to compress this afterwards. And the reason why I'm doing this with clip gain as opposed to volume automation is just because of the fact that clip gain happens before the insert. So if you get it roughly right with clip gain, then you put compression on it. The compression is acting on something which is already broadly in the right ballpark across the whole, you know, lot of dialogue. The great and the good in menswear have been going to Savile Row to get okay. dressed for so this is going to get a little bit tedious to watch. So now I'll just skip ahead a little bit to where I've finished all of this clip gaining. Okay, so I've been through and done all the clip gain now. And the next thing to do is to put a little bit of compression onto this dialogue, just to give it some control and to make it sound even more consistent. I really like the Waves Renaissance compressor. So I tend to use that almost every time I'm working on a project. We'll just reopen this loudness meter. So... The thing about applying compression is this is of course now going to affect the level that you've just established. So you need to compensate the output gain accordingly. Savarose, so I um, usually heritage. have, I don't know, uh, it's two and a half to one or thereabouts. Maybe it's even designer. lighter than that. And basically is world renowned as the, um, the center of excellence. In terms Maybe at the loudest, loudest points on rare occasions, it might hit six dB of gain reduction, but generally it'll be less than that. It's just to give a bit more consistency to it. And so, now that I've got some compression, I mean, you would obviously spend a bit longer than I just have, but you got international I'm just going to so you turn the output band, gain up. So we're now hitting Tang, got Hardy Amos, so they're, they're are really somewhere around minus 23 brand, short also term. New brand again. As well. Let's just check it on this next bit. It's a highly vibrant place, and, and, and absolutely, 20 years ago, it is um, a Fausty old... Okay, that's, that's close enough. Uh, the voiceover, I've also gone through and... Uh, Set the level on that. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke tailoring and a mecca for men who dress to impress. So obviously it's not going to be dead on minus 23 the whole time, but it's going to be somewhere around there for most of the dialogue at least. Next thing I'm going to do is have a look at the music. Now this is typical because music is usually mastered to a peak level of 0 dB, so it's right up there. And if I run this now, it's going to be... Way, way over minus 23. Just get into it. You know, so it's it's over by a significant amount. Um, I could just use the fader, you know, when I'm, when I'm mixing this. We will, of course, be automating the level of the music around the dialogue. But let me just show you how loud this would have to be or how low in level it would have to be for it to be correct. So if I bring it down somewhere here. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke tailoring and a mecca for men who dress to impress. Savile Row's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition. So I could quite happily mix it like that, but the thing is, if the fader's going to always end up around minus 15 or minus 20 dB, you can see that that part of the fader has less resolution in it than this 
part. So for example, 10 dB here covers that much range, whereas 10 dB when you get further down is a smaller amount of travel on the fader. So it's better to start off with the music quieter and use higher fader levels. It just gives you a greater degree of control. And so for that reason, with music, which is peaked very high like this, I'll usually bring it down, you know, you could bring it down, I don't know, eight or nine dB, just as a starting point. And it just means that you're operating in the greater resolution section of the fader when you're actually mixing. So you could mix this with a mouse, going through, drawing little breakpoints in, you know, this kind of approach where you establish the level and then put fades in. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke yeah, tailoring could, and a mecca for men I like to bring who it up dress in the gaps. to impress. Savile um, heritage. But the other approach is to do it with uh, a fader itself. And it might be a, wor a worthwhile idea to do this in touch mode. But there's a setting which is going to be relevant to this. I'll just show you this. So in preferences, mixing, the auto match time. I'm just going to set this to 400 milliseconds and I'll show you why in a minute. So what the auto match time does is if you've already got existing automation on the track and you start writing something in touch mode, when you let, let go of the fader, the auto match time governs how long it takes for the fader to return to its previous level. And I find that with 400 milliseconds, if I'm bringing music down underneath dialogue and then I want it to go back up in level at the end, 400 milliseconds just seems to give it about the right sort of duration. So I'm going to try and, you know, see how this goes to do all this in real time using this little floating fader. We'll give it a go. So there we go. And a mecca for men who dress to impress. Savaro's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition, it's bespoke, it's designer and basically is world-renowned as the um, centre of excellence in terms of bespoke tailoring. It's the mecca for tailoring in the world. The great and the good in menswear have been going to Savile Row to get dressed for, for decades, and they still do. You've got international designer collections down there, so you've got the likes of Lamb Van. So I'm just trying to keep the mix interesting, chain, you know, by varying the level really and pushing it up in gaps where I've got an opportunity to do so. But also new brands as well. And this will be filled in a little bit by Atmos as well. Any man who wants the best of what menswear has to offer, you go to Savile Row, you'll get it all. It's a highly vibrant place. And then and, and, I'm going to fade this music at this point. 20 years ago, it was um, a fausty old bespoke tailoring street. Now it's, uh, it's, um, it's got much more of a presence. OK, I'll stop that there. So that seemed to be OK, you know. I could probably spend time on it and get, get it better than that, but that's the workflow. I'll just quickly go through and do the rest of this and I'll come back to you in a second. And as if by magic, all the audio levels on the music have now been done. So I'm just going to switch these tracks into read mode now so I don't accidentally start writing automation. Uh, might just make those smaller. The next thing that I like to do, or that I will do in this session, is to work on the atmosphere, I think. And so these tracks, well, Let's just see what we've got. That, that one looks interesting. That looks like dialogue. Each component of each garment has been developed from scratch. Okay, that's something, that's something to watch out for, actually. Sometimes if the editor has used a cutaway from another video, you might just have stray audio that you don't, don't need. And so if something just seems not, not right, as this, you know, this won't seem right at all, this is going to conflict with the voiceover, then just get rid of it. In collaboration with world-renowned Taylor. That's obviously a total mess, so I'll just get rid of that. If you were worried that, you know, maybe you want to go back to it for whatever reason, then you could always just mute it with Command-M, but there's no chance we're going to use that, so I'll delete it. Same thing there. You know, you can tell by the waveform that's dialogue. Yeah, best wool. So get rid of that as well. Some of these clips are just silenced by the look of it, like those. We use the best Okay, so let's drop those just to tidy up the timeline. Obviously, they wouldn't actually do any harm by being there, but there's no point in them being there. Time, Alfred Brown, outside of More Leeds. of the same. So again, it's just a tidying up process to get rid of anything that's not wanted. And then this looks like atmosphere, which was recorded on the camera. 
So you probably hear that it, it cuts when the picture cuts. I can see that there's a load of silence here as well that we can drop. Ditch those. What's this one? Of British. That's more dialogue that we don't need. In fact, by the look of it, we can probably get rid of this second Atmos track. That looks like dialogue. Some would say Taylor to go Richard J. Savile Row is the. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to trash that whole dialogue track. You could just hide it, but I'm going to delete it. Um, so this atmosphere, once again, I'm going to put a high pass filter on it because I know that I don't want any of those low frequencies in it. And the, this Atmos is just going to really be there um, just to underpin the, the pictures really and to provide some support for it. So I'm probably going to keep it reasonably low. Let's just see how this sounds. I'll take it back to the start. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of the... Yeah, some of them I'll probably just bring down a little bit. And maybe just keep it there, but at a cautious level. Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke tailoring and a mecca for men who dress to impress. Savile Row's um, heritage, uh, it's tradition, it's bespoke, it's designer. I'm just going to check this bit. It's more of the same. You've got Boateng, you've got Hardy Amos, so they're, they're a really traditional and well-established brands, but also new brands as well. If you had time, you could probably replace this atmosphere with you know better sounding stuff that was stereo, but a lot of the time you don't have the time and the client wants the video immediately, so you just have to work to the time constraints you know that, that you have to work to. On these uh, sound effects tracks, there's panning automation that's come across, which I don't need. So I'll get rid of that. Because if you have you know, automation breakpoints and you, tr you then try and pan it, mound, see, you, you're always um, fighting against it. So just drop, drop them, get rid of them. Okay, I'm just checking the volume there. I know we've gone through this quite quickly, um, but finally I'm just gonna balance out these sound effects tracks. So just make sure the panning's left and right. See what they're doing. Let's just try that. Nah, I'll go with the lower level on that. Maybe even lower. This is and, uh, on this, I think I'll just Mayfair. use the uh, it's a mouse to balance these. So and a mecca for men when you've got the trim tool, you to can impress. select something and you know pull the level up or down. What's this one? <laughs> okay, well we'll keep it in. Savaro's um, heritage. That looks like the same sort of thing. Uh, and there's a taxi driver. It's bespoke. Here. It's designer. And you can hardly hear that. Designer. And basically is world renowned. I suppose it's there. It's okay. We could make more of a feature of it, but I'll, I'll leave it in this case. You've got Boateng, you've got Hardy Amos. So they're, they're a really traditional and well established brands, but also new brands as well. Any man. Okay, just skipping ahead. I know we've blasted through that. You would normally you'd spend a lot longer on a mix making it right, but for the, just to show you the workflow, that's basically how I would mix something like this. This is a really, really simple post production video. The majority of broadcast shows or videos which are heavy on dialogue, interviews, and so on would uh, have a much higher track count than this. This was just one of the simplest ones I, I could find, really. Um, the final thing that you'll want to do is probably reset the measurement on on here. So, and then play the whole program through and see what the integrated loudness is. And hopefully, this is going to come out at very, very close to minus 23 LUFS. What I'll do is I'll start playing this through, then we'll just skip ahead a little bit, and we'll come back in at the end and see what the integrated loudness is. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke tailoring and a mecca for men who dress to impress. Um, so block, fabric, colour. He's a master at colour. He gives you 
lovely little pops of interesting colour but you don't stand out a mile so it might be a subtle colour in a lining or just a really nice bright tie but you're still wearing a blue suit. Um, so all of that we did with him on an ongoing basis and still are. Okay so that's the end of that and the integrated loudness has actually come out with intolerance it's minus 22.7 LUFS. Going off the broadcast spec well it depends who you speak to really the the actual spec itself i believe says minus 23 lufs plus or minus 1 lu so you're supposed to be able to get away with as high as minus 22 or as low as minus 24 but in practice uh, i think a lot of broadcasters prefer it to be in within a lot a lot closer tolerance than that so you should ideally be within 0.5 lu so this is within 0.3 which is probably okay um, personally, I like to get it to precisely minus 23 just because I'm pedantic like that. And with this Waves plugin, once you've read, you know, once you've been through and measured the loudness, this trim control will give you the option of basically bringing the level to exactly the target, target level. So it says minus 0.3 because we are 0.3 dB out. So if I click that, now if I were to play it through again, that would come out at precisely minus 23. So that's our mix done, and the level would be fine if we were sending it to a broadcaster. In this case, though, it's not actually going to be for broadcast. This will be for YouTube. And so even though I've worked to the broadcast spec, because it's going to go on YouTube, what I might do now is bring it up to the target level for YouTube. And so YouTube recently, fairly recently, introduced its own loudness spec, and their level recommendation is minus 16 LUFS. So there's a 7 dB difference there with the broadcast spec. And so given that ours is 7 dB too quiet, I'm gonna use a, a limiter, so the Avid Pro limiter, but you could do it with Maxim, the Waves L2, L3, you know, any, any look ahead limiter will be fine. Um, firstly, the ceiling, here's another part of the specification. The loudness spec stipulates a maximum peak level of minus one dB true peak. So a true peak takes into account potential intersample over levels. So I'm gonna set the ceiling like that, and then I'll bring the threshold down. Now, if I bring it down to minus seven, that will actually result in something that's one dB out because we've dropped the ceiling. So in actual fact, to get it seven dB louder, given that I'll pull that down by one dB, I need to set this to minus eight dB. And I'll just put this before the loudness meter and just measure it again. Now, our mix should be somewhere within the, you know, within the ballpark of minus 16. And the reason why I like to work to minus 23 is just because I think it's just good practice. You know, it's the broadcast standard here in the UK. Um, and then it's very easy to repurpose the mix for any other uh, medium. So for YouTube, I'll just turn it up by, you know, 7 dB. For other things, I'll adjust it accordingly. But at least my mixes are all uniform and they're all in accordance with the R128 specification. So let's have a look at this now. It should be about minus 16 on the short term when the dialogue's on. This is Savile Row in London's Mayfair. It's a golden mile of bespoke tailoring and a mecca for men who dress to impress. Yep, so if we run that through, it would come out at precisely minus 16. So then you just, you know, mix it down. You might choose to bounce it to a track. So you might actually route all of these to an audio track and record it within the session. I'll probably do another video on that some other time, but for now, let's just bounce this down. In fact, if this were for broadcast, we'd probably make it 16 bit. I'll just go with 24 for this and then I'll do an offline bounce. Some people might prefer to do a, a real time bounce, even if they're bouncing to disc, you know, cause you can do a final check on it. Uh, I'll just for speed now do offline, bounce it. And there you go. So I haven't gone into absolute detail there about the post-production workflow, but hopefully that gives you a quick overview of the process. And as I mentioned in other videos, I will talk about some of the specific processes in a lot more detail. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again next time.